Hi, this is Dave of JavaCodeJunkie.com and welcome back to another Java Swing tutorial. In this video, we will learn about the Java Swing J panel. I'm going to cover the following topics. What is a J panel? How to create a J panel? And we'll look at some of the common methods of the J panel class. So enough talk, let's start coding. So what is a J panel? Put simply, a JPanel is a simple container class. It provides space for an application to add other components. A JPanel has its own layout manager that is separate from the JFrame that contains it. Let's create a new JPanel. I've created a new Java project and added some Swing code to create a new JFrame. Well, the JFrame is the component that we covered in the last video, so I would encourage you to go back and look at that one if you have any questions on any of the methods that I have used to create the JFrame. So to create a new JPanel, we simply say JPanel panel equals new JPanel. If you recall from our previous video, the JFrame has a default layout manager of border layout. By default, the layout manager for a JPanel is a flow layout. So we don't have to specifically specify those as they are defaults, but if we want to change any of the parameters related to the layout manager, then we can explicitly specify those. So let's set the layout manager for our JPanel. Panel.setLayout New Flow Layout and I'm going to choose the third option where we can specify the alignment of components that are added to our J panel as well as the horizontal and vertical gap. The alignment is a constant flow layout dot and it can be any of center, leading, left, right, or trailing. I'm going to make it center and our horizontal gap between components that are added to this J panel, I'm going to set to 10. And the vertical gap, I'm going to set to 5. And both of these are in pixels. And now we can add our J panel to the J frame. So frame.add panel. And we have to specify which of the five areas of the border layout we're going to add the J frame to. So we're going to say border layout dot center. Now let's give this a quick run and you'll see we have the J frame, we have our title, we have our decorations, the minimize, maximize, and the close buttons. But we don't see the J frame as nothing has been added to the J frame at this point. It does, however, because we've added it to the center area of the border layout, it does take up the entire space for our J frame, so the 800 by 500 pixel width and height. In order to see the panel, let's set the background color. Panel.setBackground color dot red. And now if we run it, we see that the entire background of our panel is now red and it takes the entire space in our J frame. As I mentioned, a panel is simply a container for other swing components. So let's create a button component and add that to our panel. Button, button equals new button. And I'll give the button a title of button. And now we can add that to our panel. Panel.add button. Let's run it again. And this time you should see the J frame with the red J panel and a J button. There we are, the button, because we have specified in our flow layout that components are going to be centered, they'll be centered on the first line of the panel. Now we could change that. We we're going to change that to flow layout dot left and run it again. You should see that the button is on the left side of the J panel. Change it to right and you'll see that the button now goes to the right side of the panel. 
So let's change our layout back to center, or let's change our alignment back to center in the flow layout manager for our panel. And let's just try adding the panel to a different area of our border layout. For example, if we were to add it to the north area, we'll now see that the panel takes up the entire area at the top of the screen. We can change it to south. Now it will float to the bottom of the screen in the south area. If we were to change it to west, it goes to the left and the east to the right. Now you notice that the sizes for these vary. With the west and the east, the width is the width of the button plus the horizontal gap on the left and right, but the height is the entire width of our J-frame. Conversely, if we were to, say, go back to north, we'll see that the area is the height of the button plus the vertical gap on the top and the bottom, but the width is the entire width of our J-frame. Now this, if we resize the J-frame, changes, and the button still floats to the center because that is our alignment that we've set on the layout manager for the J-panel. Let's add a couple more buttons to our panel and let's see what that looks like. We'll change this to button one, button one, two, two, and three, three. And let's run. And now we'll see that we have, actually I should probably change the text on the buttons so that we can distinguish them. We'll run. And now we have three buttons. Again, if we were to change the size of our J-frame, they float to the center as we change the width. If we were to move those now to the, to the west section of our border layout, you'll now see that the width is the width of all three buttons plus the horizontal gap. The height, again, is the height based on our J-frame. Now the width will not change. The height will change as we resize our J-frame. And if we change the position of the panel to be center in our J-frame, we'll see that the J-panel takes up the entire available space. And the buttons, since we have that in a panel with a flow layout, any components that are added will be added from left to right. They will respect the alignment that we've set. So let's go back and change the alignment to left. Run it again. Center, top to bottom, left to right. If we change the size of our J frame, the buttons move to succeeding lines as the J frame is collapsed horizontally. And one final thing that I'm going to go over related to the J panel, not necessarily just related to the J panel. This can be done for any of the swing components. I'll show you how to set the preferred width and height or the preferred size. Panel dot set preferred size, new dimension, and we'll set the width and the height to say 250 by 250. We'll organize the imports and then we'll run. And because we've added it to the center section of our border layout, the preferred size isn't respected. Components added to the center area of a border layout occupy all of the remaining space, and that is space that's not currently occupied by the north, south, west, or east sections. If we were to change that to west and run, you'll see that the width is respected, but the height again is computed based on the size of our J-frame. That would be the same for the east. We change it to north, and just to make that a little easier to discern, I'll change the height to 100. So you'll see the 100, but the entire width is computed based on the width of our J-frame. Same thing with the south. 
And in general, uh, I'll tell you that I do not like to set preferred sizes for most of my components. I prefer to let the layout manager decide based on its own internal algorithm how to lay out and to size those components. So if we were to remove that, you'll see that again it's sized based on the height of the buttons plus the vertical gap of five pixels before and after. In this video tutorial we learned about the Java Swing J panel. If you enjoyed this tutorial please click the thumbs up button to like the video. Also consider subscribing to this channel to view more Java Swing videos. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe and keep on coding.